Hi everyone, and welcome to Calculus Lesson 1-2, Mathematical Models, a Catalog of Essential Functions. In this lesson, we're going to review what a mathematical model is, how to create one both by hand and on a calculator, and also look at the different types of functions that we know about. So we're going to start out with what is a mathematical model. A mathematical model is a description of a real-world phenomenon using mathematics. So we take real-world information and we try to build an equation to describe what's going on. Mathematical models help us understand the phenomenon and sometimes help us make predictions about future behavior. So maybe there's a lot of data in a table what we can do is take that data and try and organize it using mathematics and find a pattern in it. And then we can use that pattern to try and predict what's going to happen in the future or what happened in between two measurements. Now, one thing to remember is that mathematical models are never completely accurate, but they're an idealization about what is going on in that real world phenomenon, because it's nearly impossible to predict what's going to be happening in the real world, but we can use mathematics to kind of get close to it. Now let's talk about the process of mathematical modeling. You'll notice I have five steps here. Um, in this class, we will not be using all five of these steps. However, if you were going to use this in a job later in life, you would want to be able to use all five of these. The first and most important step is to identify and name the independent and dependent variables. It's really important to figure out which thing in the situation depends on the other thing. Second, you want to use the facts or tables of values and formulas to create a mathematical formula that relates the variables. Okay, so you might end up with a linear equation or a quadratic equation. And we've done this a lot of times in the past. Um, a lot of times in pre-calc, I would assign you to do the um, focus on modeling sections at the end of the chapter. And you are using this to create formulas. Okay, that's what you were doing. Step three is that you're going to apply mathematical principles to the model to derive mathematical conclusions. So that's like the predictions we used to make. I'd say, okay, what was the equation? And then I'd say, well, predict what would happen in 10 years or something like that. So we'll use those um, models that you create to create a prediction of what's going to happen. Step four is to interpret the conclusions in terms of the real world problem. So you always want to take your conclusion back to what it was talking about. So instead of saying the answer is 286, you would say, oh, I think in 10 years there might be 286 people in this town. So you'd want to relate it back to whatever it was you were talking about. And finally, step five, now this is the hardest one to do, test the prediction using new real data. So you wanna go back to that same situation and get more data and see if whatever you predicted was actually right. So we're going to start off by talking about linear models. A linear model is exactly what it sounds like. It's a real world situation that can be modeled by a straight line. So a linear function, of course, is a function whose graph is a straight line. Now, most of the time we try to use slope intercept form to write your formula. I know it's very tempting to use point slope in this case, but slope intercept is the preferred format. Now, one thing to remember is that these functions are growing and we can even say that they're decreasing at a constant rate. So if the slope is positive, they're growing. If the slope is negative, they would be decreasing. Let's take a look at an example of a linear model. In example one, it says, as dry air moves upward, it expands and cools. If the ground temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and the temperature at a height of one kilometer is 10 degrees Celsius, 
express the temperature T in degrees Celsius as a function of the height H in kilometers, assuming that a linear model is appropriate. Draw the graph of the function, what does the slope represent, and what is the temperature at a height of 2.5 kilometers? So we're going to go through those steps. Step one was to identify the dependent and independent variable. So pause this video, try and do that, and then press play to see if you're right. Okay, so I decided that the independent variable is height and the dependent variable is temperature. And the reason I picked that is that we're doing this as a function of height. That means height is the variable that I'm going to be inputting into this formula. And temperature is the result. Because notice, if I give you a temperature, you can't necessarily tell me what height it is, but if I give you a height, you can measure the temperature there. So height is independent and temperature is dependent. The temperature depends on the height. Next, what you're going to do is you're trying to come up with two ordered pairs to use based on the information here. And then try and find a linear equation based on those two ordered pairs. So I found the points 0, 20, and 1, 10. Now, I thought you might not remember how to create a linear equation. So the first thing that you need is the slope. Find the slope of the line first. And then guess what? The y-intercept is already given because x is 0, y is 20. So you just need to calculate the slope, use the y-intercept, and write this in slope-intercept form. So I calculated the slope to be negative 10 over 1, or just negative 10. And the y-intercept, as I said, is 20. So our linear function is y equals negative 10x plus 20. So that's our linear model for that. Now, the next thing we have to do is draw the graph of the function. So I can't do that on this program right now, but try and draw the graph on your own, and we'll check it when we get to class. Next, they ask what the slope represents. So see if you can figure out what that slope represents, and then press play to see if you're right. The slope represents the change in temperature as the height changes. So my temperature is decreasing by 10 degrees Celsius for every one kilometer. Okay, and when you're trying to figure out what the slope represents, it's very useful to put in the units on these numbers. Remember, we had temperature and height. So the temperature was on top of the slope formula and the height was on the bottom. Okay, so I know it's going down because it's negative, 10 degrees Celsius for every one kilometer. Now, the last thing we need to do is figure out the temperature at a height of 2.5 kilometers. So all you need to do is take this 2.5 and put it in for X and see what you get. So go ahead and do that and then press play to check your answer. So all you do is you do negative 10 times 2.5, which is negative 25, plus 20, which is negative 5. So the temperature at a height of 2.5 kilometers is negative 5 degrees Celsius. Next, we're going to take a look at what it means to have empirical models. An empirical model is a model that's based entirely on collected data. So what we just did was finding an empirical model, assuming that that data was collected. Now, this function fits the data and is going to give you the idea of what that data is basically doing. Okay, it's not going to be exact, but it's going to give you a basic idea of what the data is doing. Now, when we find those functions, that's known as curve fitting or finding a regression equation. Okay, and those words might sound familiar because we did that in Algebra 2 and we did it again in Precal. Now, what I've done is, along with this video, I've uploaded the instructions for how to do that on your calculator so you can remind yourself. But the last thing you're going to do for this video is input some data into your calculator so that we can use it in class the next time we meet.
So on this last slide, you're not actually going to do the question, but at least type this data into your calculator, and we'll get working on that next time when we meet. Okay, so once you've typed that in, don't forget to write down any questions you had about we did, what we talked about in these first few slides of our lesson. Okay, bring those to class and make sure to ask them because I do want to meet to, to answer all of your questions.